Hi Monica Helms, I'm Chris Vargas, the Executive Director of MOTHA Museum of Transgender History and Art, a museum project that seeks to highlight trans contributions to our current cultural landscape. I'd love to ask you a few questions for an interview to be presented in MOTHA's first ever gallery show at the One National Gay and Lesbian Archives in Los Angeles. First, please tell me a little bit about yourself. Hello, Chris. I would like to thank you very much for this honor in displaying your flag at the uh, museum. I really appreciate it. Well, I currently live in Marietta, Georgia, but I'm originally from Phoenix, Arizona. I spent eight years in the Navy and served on two submarines. I have two sons and three grandsons. My transition started in 1997, and I quickly became an activist in Arizona then in Georgia, when I moved there in 2000, I formed the Transgender American Veterans Association in 2003 and was its president until 2013. I worked for Sprint for 25 years and retired on January 23, 2015. My main hobby is model rockets. When did you design the transgender pride flag and where was it made? The original flag was first made in August of 1999 and I contacted the same company that made the bisexual pride flag because that individual was the one that inspired me to do this. He said the trans community needed a flag. One day I woke up and all of a sudden the design just appeared to me. So I contacted the Freedom Flag and Banner in North Miami, Florida, and they sent me some swatches. And I picked the ones that I wanted, and a couple weeks later, I had my, the first flag for transgender community. Where did your design of the flag make its first public appearance? A month after I had the flag made for me, the local LGBT magazine, Echo magazine, did an article of the flag, and that was the first time the public, or anybody in the public, knew about it. And the first time that it was seen in public for a large event was the Arizona Pride Parade. I got to march up front in the color guard because I'm a veteran, and I carried the flag for the first time, uh, Arizona Pride, in uh, 2000. What was the inspiration for its design, and what do the colors represent? As I stated previously, the person who inspired me was a person who created the bisexual pride flag. And the colors have a specific meaning. Light blue is for baby boys, a traditional color, and pink is traditional for baby girls, and the white in the middle is for everybody else that uh, has non defining gender, neutral gender, however they feel that if they don't fit in either one of the gender binary spectrum. Did people immediately understand the significance of the design or did you have to explain it? After the flag was made, I had to constantly explain to people what the colors meant. And finally it caught on and people started using it in other parts of the country. It was a little difficult at first to get people to understand, but uh, it caught on. How long did it take for the flag's design to catch on? And do you still see your flag design in popular usage today? Well, I would say that it took probably about 10 years before it started becoming common use in various parts of the country. I do recall a year or so ago that saw pride parades, pride festivals across the world. And I was seeing the flag in all different countries. And it was very nice to be able to see it spread out that far. So it took a little bit of time, but uh, people are now using it and they are still using it. I'm really proud to have contributed that for the community. Where is the most exciting place you've seen your flag flown? I'm going to have to say that one of the most interesting places that I saw the trans colors was one year they painted the Equality House, which uh, is right across the street from Fred Phelps' church. 
they painted it the trans colors during Transgender Day of Remembrance. It was so amazing to see that. Another time was they raised a 20 by 30 foot flag on the Castro District flagpole, the one where the rainbow flag normally flies. They did that on the Day of Remembrance. Then another place was a person who climbed the highest peak in Europe and unfolded a real small trans flag at the tallest, tallest peak in Europe. I just thought that was really amazing. What do you think of some of the alternate designs of the transgender pride flag? Specifically, Jennifer Pelanin's design, which represents gender as more like a continu continuum or a spectrum. Over the years, I have seen at least six different transgender pride flag designs, including my own and Jennifer's. Jennifer's out is the only one that has endured besides my own. I'm real proud of her for doing that. We're a very diverse community and we could use multiple flags. Why is it important to have a separate pride flag for trans-identified individuals? I think it's very important for us to have our own flag. Uh, there's many, many times when we need to be flying the rainbow flag, but there's a lot of times when we have to show our own individuality, and the trans flag does that. It allows the trans people to be able to show their individuality, to show that we are here as well. Thank you very much for all those who do fly it. Where is the original flag now? The original trans flag is not the one behind me. The original one is currently at the Smithsonian. They have not put it on display yet. They are creating a display for it, and it may, may be at least another year before we see it on display. In August of last year, I presented it to them they are expanding their LGBT collections. And not only did I give them the flag, but I gave them several other items of my personal life because when they put a display up, they just don't want the item. They want the history of the person who created it or donated it. So that's why I have other items there as well. And was there any hesitation in donating the flag to the Smithsonian? Yeah, there was some hesitation. I, I mean, I contacted them, but it took me a little time before I finally got all the information together that they were looking for, because I guess I just didn't want to give it up. You know, it, it was something that was with me for a long time. At least I know that it's going to be taken very good care of, and people for generations will be able to see it. And Chris, I want to thank you very much for allowing me to work on this video with you. It's been a pleasure, and I hope that one day I'll get a chance to come down there and see this. Thank you very much, Monica. Mm -hmm.